Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of the report filters area in a pivot table. Now report filters is the name introduced in Excel 2007 for what was formerly known as the page area of a pivot table. So if you're following through with this lesson and you use an Excel 2003 or earlier, whenever I use report filters you use the page drop area. All right, now for the demonstration data, I'm going to return to some information that a viewer has sent to me pri in, in, in previous lessons. He's a hydrologist. What he does is he analyzes the average water flow by date. However, there is a water year or a hydrological year. In North America, the water year, the hydrological year, begins on October 1st and it ends on September 30th. So here's his latest challenge. He wants to use a pivot table to see the average of the daily water flows by day in a month of an actual water year. So this is perfect for using the report filters. Here's what I'm going to do before I create my pivot table. I'm going to take the original three fields, date, daily water flow, and the water year, and I'm going to use the year function, the month function, and the day function to extract the actual year from cell A2, or the values in column A. Now notice that the year function extracts the serial number from a date. The month function extracts a serial number from a late, from a, a, a value in a month in, in a in a date, and the day function extracts the serial number again. I'm going to extract it from this value and copy this down. All well and good, except for the month. I don't want to see an integer. I don't want to see one for January, two for February. Rather, I want to see when it's January have J A N as the label. Now. There's no way to use formatting to turn 10 into October. So what I did is I used an incredibly powerful function in Excel called the choose, called the choose function. Here's how the choose function works. Let's bring up the function arguments dialog box. It's going to look for an index number. So I'm going to point it over here to the integer, which is the month. Now notice that it will choose a value or an action to perform from a list of values based upon the index number. The index number can be any number from 1 to 254. So this is perfect for applying labels to an integer to return the label for a month month in a year. And then when it finds the number one over here, then it will look and return the label January. Notice that I've included that label as an absolute cell reference. When it finds two over here, it will return February, so on and so forth. When it finds 10, as you can see, then it returns October. Now I copy it down and then I copy and paste to replace the label for the integer. So I'm not going to demonstrate how to do that in this lesson. Here is now my finished table. Table. Instead of the original three fields, I now have six fields including the three digit label for the month. I'm ready to create the pivot table. With one cell selected, I go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and I choose to create a pivot table. And in this case, I'm going to create a pivot table on this worksheet beginning in this cell. Now, remember the key to making this work is that what we want to do is we want to see the reports organized by the water year. So I'm going to take the water year and drop it down here into the report filter. Remember that if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier, this area is called the page. So here I can see the data organized by the water year. And a new feature in starting in Excel 2007 is that I can choose to see this by multiple years. So now what I want to do is I want to come back here to my pivot table field list and I want to take the calendar day. Remember we use the day function to extract the actual day from uh, column A over here. So I'm going to take the day and I'm going to drop it into the row. So here you should see the numbers 1 through 31. There are 31 possible days in a month. My viewer then wants to see the months organized going across the columns. 
Now, what are we actually going to summarize? We're going to summarize the daily flows. When we drop it down here into the values, Excel tells us that it's going to count those values. Well, we don't want to count the values. We want to summarize by average. So I'm going to right mouse click over here. I'm going to come over here to the value field settings. I'm going to do two things to change it. I'm going to change how the data is summarized, not as a count, but rather as an average. And I want to change the number format, not to use the general format, but to use the number formatting with one decimal place. No thousand separator, just the number with one decimal place. Click OK. Click OK. All right, so now what we have over here is you can see that we have the months. And let's change this from column label to be month. And let's come over here, and instead of having this as row labels, let's change this into day. All right, now remember that the hydrological year, the water year, begins on October 1st in the Northern Hemisphere. One of the absolutely incredible features of a pivot table is that we can just type in the label that we want, and it will reorganize the data. So pay attention. 342.5 is the number for the first day in October in water year. Oh, let's come over here and, and choose one particular water year. Water year 1932. So in October, it's 288. What we want to do is we want to organize this by water year. So I just type in the month label that I want, October, and you see how that copied it over incredibly. Pay attention to November, 306. So I come up here to the label, and I'll make that November, NOV. Come over here and make this December. And now I have the water year, October, November, December, January, February, organized by the water year. Now, one of the concerns that my viewer had, he said, well, how will this account for the days when it's a leap year? So let's pay attention over here to February. What we want to do is come down here to the last value and notice that in water year 1932, that was a leap year. So there were 29 days in February, whereas in the next year, in water year 1933, when we look over here, we only have 28 days. So it's a great way to organize your data. Now, the truly incredible part, because what my viewer says is he wants to be able to analyze the average water flows by month by water year. So we can use a great feature if we take advantage of the report filters, if we take advantage of the page drop area. What we can do is come up here to Pivot Table Tools, Options, and over here in the Pivot Table Grouping, what we want to do is use the drop-down arrow next to Options, and we want to show report filter pages based upon the field that we have up here in the report filter. So pay attention down here. Notice that I have three tabs until I click OK. Watch your screen. You're going to think it's going crazy. You're going to think that my machine has a virus attached to it. No, it doesn't. What we have now is that we have a discrete pivot table for each of the water years. So when we use the report filter area and we use that pivot table options show the report filters, it will create create a separate pivot table for each of the values in that water year. So it was a great way for me to help the viewer to solve his dilemma, to solve his problem. And that's typical of the tips that I offer on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.